Ethnic cleansing. What's more communist than that? That's right, nothing. Today in RimWorld, our antagonist Rim Jong-un aims to strengthen the state's hold on everyone's day-to-day. -day. And just how do communist governments usually accomplish this foreboding and essential task? That's right, violence. It is, after all, in the Kami 101 handbook, and I value historic accuracy over all else. But before we get to all that, thanks to the comment section, we'll be naming the heir to the Kami Supreme Leader, Vajimir Poontin. The baby's a girl, but hey, it's 2024. She may not be for long. Sorry, I mean, they may not be for long. Old Flugtog may not be for long either because we're rapidly running low on Gojuice. So when he got a crush on the baby mama of Vajimir, well, we of course had to crush his desires. No one shall be tunnel buddies with the Supreme Leader. His throbbing microcock will be all these women ever know. The Supreme Tootsie Roll flies solo Mio, plus Rim Jobs working on repairing their broken home. So unlike typical communist protocol, I'm gonna let him cook. While he's cooking, a trader visited us. Seeing how sparse the goods were that we could sell to turn a profit, got the wheels of the Trabant turning. Urge to capitalism rising! And the decision was made to increase our production of cotton. So instead of spending time watching Skibbity Toilets on an iPhone 3 while eating Ben & Jerry's Americone Dream, which, by the way, is the most commie flavor of Ben & Jerry's, will be toiling endlessly instead. Baby food had to be created to feed Vajimir. Punta Trap used rice, which I thought was funny and fitting. Also, we're now going to be naming our vehicles with the preface of DP, or Diplomatic Peoples. So, say welcome to the Diplomatic Peoples Day Woo. Yep, DP has uh, no other hidden meaning. You sick bastards. Side note. I don't know why, but I really want some double stuffed Oreos. Our colonists continue to make Illuminati type offerings of finger cuts. I really should get some new forms of recreation. Unfortunately, there's nothing else we can really build right now. So the satanic ritual shall continue until morale improves. Our production capabilities grow with the ability to finally smelt slag. The labors of the people continue and the fields of forced labor begin to show their fruits. But best of all, our people keep cutting their goddamn fingers. Look at her, going to bed with bloody fingies. Well, I guess if she double clicks the mouse now, she won't need any lube. And I'm mean, if, if it's that time of the month, well, that's just a bonus. All right, that was gross, I'll admit it. Zibberschnicked is ordered to clear the fields to make room for more planting. But a communist mole person being in the sunlight, hot and above all, following the tradition of hunger, snaps and decides to burn this motherfucker down. I've only ever experienced rage like this when I studied for weeks to pass the online CAPTCHA quiz, just to fail miserably. Goddamn lack of proper nutrition. A tale as old as time, I'm afraid. But Punter Trap uses the power of persuasion to calm her down, and Dr. Rimjong abates the fire. She's lucky that we need her, or it'd be the gulag for this one. God damn it, Rimjong, not you too! Fucking fingers, boys, I'm telling you. I should stop him, but it releases copious amounts of dopamine into my brain, so god damn it, I'm just not going to. The timer on Rimjong's romancing abilities is also off cooldown. What we need now is the awesome power of Kami seduction. And who does Kami seduction better than anyone else? This handsome devil. That's right, Rimjob Uwoon, who's so handsome he won Miss Ikea 69 years in a row. And the judges definitely weren't under any threat of family murderization while scoring the competition. No, no, that'd be crazy. Crazy. I was crazy once. They put me in a room. A rubber room. This plan is perfect. It's so perfect a purple-haired liberal arts major college student couldn't do any better. And bam, just like that. Vajimir is no longer from a broken home, fated to join the Crips at age eight. We did it, boys. And now Rimjong can focus on slaying the other clams of the colony. Hopefully he's not allergic to shellfish. We fashion children toys out of concrete for young Vajimir, and the Supreme One takes it upon himself to clear the fields. But unfortunately, I forgot that these things explode. So, uh, good job, Rimjong. You really cleared the fields, eh? Just not in the way I desired. Kami Jesus showed mercy upon our good little commies and brought forth the rain, saving most of our crops and sparing us to live even deeper in poverty. Wait a minute. Kami Jesus wouldn't do that. That sounds like that bastard business Jesus. Oh God, what's happening? Oh, thanks Freddy foreshadowing. So anyway, we got the Mechanitor mechanical device, but we don't need mechanical devices in this colony. Nope, we have Rimjong for that. Ah, Vajimir loves it. Fucking perv. Just over there chilling, bing chilling even. Even though our utopia is doing well in uh, certain regards, we lack direly on research capabilities. So Rimjong uses his supreme powers to fill Flugtog's numbered days with an increased work capacity. 
Even the sick and dying are not spared from hard labors in our society. That's capitalist pig dog mentality. Fuck that. So work harder, damn you, or it's the gulag for you. Uh, honestly, I don't even know if work drives like really help research, but eh, you know, it's worth a shot. We completed drug production and began researching toxifier generators. This will help Gutenberg fulfill her desire to eat microplastics while also giving us more energy. Sure, it creates pollution. But being commies, we only gaslight people to think we care about a green environment. Really, we just want power. But don't tell anyone. We got a good scam going. Flugtog is down to his last go juice. And we expand our mountain home to put down our new generators. God damn, just look how fast they dig. You know, I want to make more New York Jew tunnel jokes, but God damn it, boys, we're, we're going to be doing a lot of digging. I'm worried these jokes will get old. Unlike the children they took into those tunnels. Ain't that right, Hasidics? We're planning to take over the land to the south. Insert South Korean invasion joke here, maybe? I, I don't know. Ah, yeah, that'll do, I guess. Our little commies like it, at least. And just like that, we're almost done already. With some securing of the southern border, we can complete our breakthrough. I know, I know. Securing the southern border is what commies are supposed to be against. But this is Ikea, not America. So it's fine. Last thing Ikea needs is to be invaded by a mass of immigrant raiders seeking to destroy our society. Those damn military-aged single males. But hey, it's this random camel's birthday today. Happy birthday, Colin. I hope the sunlight brings you many sparkles. Now then, eating is the most anti-commie activity you can perform. So hunger strikes it is. Woo! Yeah, yay! But not by choice. Because we've ran out of food. At least we will sooner than later because we're now making fine meals. Huh, maybe I am the chosen one. The one to actually do communism correctly this time. Well, bow before me, pussies. We now interrupt today's episode to thank today's video sponsor. Papa's Master Baits. Do you sneak out to go fishing in the middle of the night to get food for your family without the state knowing? Of course you do. We've been watching you do it. But now you can sextuple the amount of fish you catch by using Papa's Master Baits. We've got the best tackles and lures. Lure those fish in and show them your master bait. Like a woman walking alone in a park. Hook, line, and rape, er, uh, sinker. With Papa's Master Baits, you'll have enough food for your family and to bribe the commie inspectors to not throw you in the gulag. And right now, for one like on this video, you can receive 1% off. Wow, what a deal. The like button is in your asshole. You need to finger your asshole. Fucking fat. But anyway, we finished the toxic generator research, so it's time we make some garbage. If I wanted garbage, I should have just bought the communist manifesto. Ha ha! We lay down the plans to expand our storage room, and would you look at this? A beautiful commie mother feeding her child while starving herself. Wow. All for little Vagimir. But Flugtog finally runs out of go juice. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. If you can't provide for the state, then the state can't provide for you. Rimjong strips him of all his possessions and chucks him into prison. Well, I mean, it's not a prison, it's a, it's a gulag fun camp. No need to invite your friends because they're already here. Turns out we can't have a public execution when the person is down, so we'll treat Flugtog like we do with all veterans and leave them to die on the streets. Cold, scared, and alone. Well, not the streets. The, it's the gulag, but you know what I mean. Ah, our first cotton harvest, finally. We're moving up now, boys. And we're starting to eat fine meals. Shit, we may be turning into the proletariat. With the cotton we raise the banners of freedom around the col- er, no, wait, hang on. Let me try that again. Sorry, I'm really drunk on copium right now. <clears throat> we raise the banners of state oppression around the colony as a constant reminder to our peons that there is no hope, there is no escape, and there is no food. We have successfully decolonized our colony. Actually, that sounds like a nonsensical oxymoron, but uh, shut the fuck up. The commie supreme government can't be incorrect or incompetent. That's it. We need to slay someone to assert our dominance. Uh, you. Wait, no, that's, that's slaying pussy. Uh, wrong kind. Um, you. Ah, that's better. Damn colonizer. That'll teach you to, uh, colonize, I guess? Anyways, to the mass grave with your freeloading ass. But let's move on. The toxifier generator is finally complete and Gutenberg gets her highly sought after garbage. Yes, hide your face in shame as you scarf down that muck. Communism. When you're so hungry, you'll eat toxic garbage. And now that Flugtog is dead, we, uh, we have no researcher, boys. Uh, it's a bit of an oversight on my part, but Ibn Flog will have to fill that gap in coverage. We're also direly lacking on a crafter. Two things that are incredibly important. 
We really need to get some new brainwashed dolts in here. Thankfully, we have a quest to aid some drifters, which we quickly accept. Just like Gutenberg's new favorite meal, they're trash. It's some pink-haired Wokey and two children. The pork child has a peg leg too. Bacon on a stick, eh? <laughs> All right, sorry. We do need children's clothes for Vagimir. All we have are our commie uniforms. Fucking dope though, right? Just wait till they put them on. Well, of course we move to subdue those who would seek refuge. We pocket sand the children and slay the bacon wrapped peg leg. What? We really needed their clothes. And now there's people bleeding everywhere. Even Ibinflag is bleeding while Vagimir is slurping on those mommy milkies. So it's commie healthcare to the rescue. Even for our gulag guests. We give them ample amounts of government sponsored and totally free on healthcare. Our maid services are unmatched. No, not that maid. Yeah, that's the one. We then have a public execution, AKA Kami Healthcare. Rim Jung's not a bad dude. He, uh, he doesn't run with a bunch of bad boys. Good old Rim Pop. Er, corn job? <laughs> yeah, corn job. What's that on the Urban Dictionary? Actually, a Rim Pop could be a pink sock. AKA a prolapsed anus. So uh, Rimworld, right, right. So our labors continue with our good little commies striving to give it their all for a prosperous state. Some even taking it all. Our wealth uh, sort of grows, but I notice we've not had an event for a while. And let me tell you boys, Ahmad must have updated because I'm pretty goddamn sure the storyteller is currently broken. I'll work on fixing it though, but for meow, just watch our good little commies all slip into their new state mandated uniforms. We've got all kinds of commies. Trash eating commies, the rare cooking commies, and even bleeding commies. Wow, just look at all these glorious commies. I actually don't know why she's bleeding. Maybe she lactates blood? Weird, I, I don't know. Commies are so red, even their yitty juice is red. It's canon now. We then release the other child. Communism makes dreams come true, but our rice and cotton crops are coming in, so it's back to our glorious labors. We build a pool table and can finally stop cutting our goddamn fingies. Just in time for another missile test launch too. And we have even more missiles this time. Now you must really be scared. Take that, America. The awesome power of our missile test launch even brought on a new colonist to follow the supreme leader, Rim Jaboon. Rim Jaboon. It was a caffeine addicted woman with no stats that were helpful. I mean, at least it's another poon for Rim Jong to shmang. Ah, chocolate milk woman. Is this guy 7-Eleven or 9-Eleven? She equips her mandated uniform and we rename her to Hlugtarn. Hlugtarn. I, I can't even say these. Our crops then spontaneously combusted. And after fighting the fires of capitalism, it was time to improve our fields, laying down tons of concrete, mainly because we needed something to do. Without research, it's hard to keep them all occupied. And an occupied workforce is a distracted workforce. Another good distraction are royal weddings. And now Rim Jong and Ibn Flag will tie the knot. I knew we could cure that wound. No broken relationship can stand up against authoritarian threats of violence. And a blood moon rises, very auspicious of the days to come. Or just a random event, I don't know, we'll see. But an Eltex meteor was captured in our mighty DMZ. We of course mine it and place down a machining table. It's high time we started implementing sweatshops around here. Thus far, the DMZ has been unstoppable. But as we gain notoriety as a world player, the pig dogs will send stronger and stronger raids against us. So we must mobilize newer and stronger weaponry. The time has come for our ultimate destructive weapon. Oh, that's right, boys. We shall unleash the awesome power of acorns. <laughs> okay, we're, we're not actually going to do that. Not even Rimjong can handle the power of acorns. We'll just do some sandbags and a couple more turrets. We're then infiltrated by wild men, one with an incredible intellectual skill. But since none of our commies are good with animals, there's nothing that we can do. And just look at how fucking fast Zibbershnicked is at mining. Just like that, 1,000 fucking steel, it's amazing. And Ibn Flog is at four intellectual, so we're right back to where we started when old Flugtog was researching. Ah, good times. With our recently made machining table, we make some new weapons. Look out, world, the commies are advancing. And with that, a goods trader visits our colony. Seeing how we can offload all our old unused clothes gives Rimjong an idea. Using our newly discovered sweatshop technology, we can make mass-produced cheap goods to sell to foreign markets, thus generating massive wealth to fuel Rimjong's desire to material things and power. We're already exploiting our workforce. What's a little more? Maybe exploiting your people is evil, but it's not Rimjong's fault. Not at all. He's a Virgo, you see. What do you expect? The purple haired stars made him do it. No Virgo can control themselves in a circumstance like this. Urge to capitalism rising. Although our crafting skills are shit, we shall make mass amounts of fancy vests. Cheap overproduced clothing items. God damn it, if that's not Kami, I don't know what is. You gotta manifest the wealth. Pull out the crystals, set the sound blaster on 420 hertz and just goon. 
Goon the vibrations into existence, man. As our colony advances and grows, so too shall Rimjong's might and influence. And his edging to goon. As we admire Rimjong's ever-growing harem, some distraught people seeking medicine wander in. Mayhaps our prayers for more commies was answered? This one's a little too plump to be a communist, but uh, we can change that. A little starvation does everyone good. She got a body like a bag of milk. Milk that's been left out in the hot Tucson sun during summer for five days. Lumpy, stinky, and ready to slime. The fatty is a good crafter and the cat boy is good at animals, which could lead us to a tamed smart wild man. So the decision is made to throw them both into the Gulag summer camp of friends. We do accidentally kill the child, but you know it's a sacrifice Rimjong is willing to make. The plump western woman turns out to be unwaveringly loyal, so our dreams of cow tipping is unfortunately over. We will, however, convert and recruit the cat boy, who's so old he has cataracts. But we can use his animal skills. Luckily, it's not another punter trap situation where he will die without loving, which means Rimjong will be the only stag in this field. Last thing we need is two dudes playing each other in battle shits over pussy. With not much else to do, we set off on a quest to gain the fabled Kami artifact of the Bowl of Hunger. The local population stood no chance against our mighty communist human meat shield tactics, and one of them is actually an okay crafter, so naturally we kidnap them to perform propagandizing. You need a miner. Ha! Ah, isn't that why we have Punter Trap? With a successful return to our motherland, we execute the plump woman. Can't have too many mouths to feed after all. With the increase in warm-bodied mouth breathers, the room of fun guys is expanded. And I'm not talking about the unsub podcast room. No, no. These are different fun guys. Know who's not a fun guy? That intellectual wild man we wanted. He must be from Hollywood because this pedo is after Punta Trap. So naturally, he's gunned down in the streets. It's called revenge, and it's a dish best served while bleeding out alone in a field. But now we're back to square one with getting a researcher. Again, our storyteller is definitely 100% broken. Look at this lack of events. You know, I feel like this happens every single fucking RimWorld playthrough I do, but I guess that's the risk you run when you have 260 plus mods. It's maddening. Maddening enough to make the cripple cat boy fight an injured woman. Ah, with actions like that, he'll make a perfect liberal. I, I mean communist. Ah, same thing. Just look at his woke ideologically misplaced rage. God damn beautiful. God damn it, they're at it again. This time we intervene and bring the beat down of the supreme leader upon them. Just in time for a Kami miracle. The royal wedding. Rimjong and Ibenflog tie the knot. A little late though, I mean, their kid's already, you know, technically a bastard. Poor Vajimir. And the prisoners are just bleeding out in the cell during the wedding. I mean, they'll probably survive, I don't know, that's the fun. And okay, they'll make it. Good job, Punto Trap. Too bad you can't cure Hlugtarns. Caffeine withdrawal, I should not have named her that. Which I am doing nothing about. But at least our cows are fucking. And they had a baby boy. He'll become food for the starving masses. We don't want any motherfucking inbred cow meat. Well, I guess inbred meat wouldn't be too bad. I mean, that's just basically a sandwich. Still, with not much to do, we build some fancy docks and begin the recruiting of our newly converted little kami gulag goers. We finally finish researching biofuel refining. And honestly, I don't even remember why I went after that one. But anyway, we'll move on to the ENIAC because that will open up our research to a whole new level. We then successfully recruit our ancient cat boy and due to the traumatic brainwashing experience he gains an iron stomach which he'll need in a kami society of garbage eating warm bodies and of course he gets in that kami drip wow what a beautiful kami cat boy he's perfect eh eh perfect because he's a cat okay anyway apparently cataracts are an unnatural enhancement because he's sad about it unless he's got a vibrator for a cock but God damn it, I'm not gonna check under that hood. Guess we should just pull his eyes out, maybe? Yeah, we'll see how it progresses. Aw, Vagimir, your future peoples are doing well. The sweatshop is well underway. First the capitalism rising! Everyone is happy, and we'll make the Kami Cat Boy the new fist of the supreme leader. He has 15 fucking social, I have to. Sorry, Gutenberg, but not even communism is safe from the patriarchy. She mad. Typical woman. How's that for a wage gap, you bitch? Our Kami cat gains an expertise in conversion, obviously. And now all of a sudden people want some Kami statues. The statue showing how the supreme leader doesn't poo. To quell the masses, we shall create said statue for our glorious ideology room, which will also install some phallic structural supports to reinforce the patriarchy. Ah, the supreme leader doesn't poo. A statue so nice, you say it twice. Just in time to have our perfect festival, which apparently you need to have someone adopt another someone, so I, I don't know. Uh, Hlugtarn. 
will now be Gutenberg's mother, I guess. Let's hope Rimjong isn't planning any harem orgies soon. We don't want a repeat of the cow situation. But honestly, I think the only orgies that would happen would be with our commie cat boy. My dude can seduce anyone with a flick of that tail. This may not do so well. These are Rimjong's bitches. Gotta keep an eye on him. Some good old commie surveillance programs, I think. Yeah, that. Careful when you're doing your catnip, cat boy. It may just be your last. And now Rimjob's looking at how he doesn't poo, I guess? I don't know. It's funny, though. But anyways, with an early harvest due to some freezing weather approaching, our fancy vest inventory grows, ready to pave the way to an influx of commie state-owned wealth, all in the name of the supreme leader, Rim Jong Un. With some much-needed expansions underway, we round out day 100 of our communist utopia. We've got plenty of sexy, idiotic commie bitches, brainwashing subjects, and mouth-breathing imbeciles, plenty of trash to eat, a broken storyteller, and a world that's not ready for the awesome power of communism to be unleashed upon it in a mighty non-pooing Rimjong's name. With that, I hope you cats enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. A special thanks to the members of the Cheesemonger Society, whose cataract-ridden eyes I wish to pluck out with a spoon. I'll catch you cats on the flippity-flop, and as always, I love you, bye.